The air was thick with the smell of spicy peppers and car exhaust as Ngozi moved through a busy crowd. Despite the colorful fabric stall nearby, she still sweated. At 25, Ngozi had lots of energy and worked two jobs to save for her dream of opening a bakery. That day, she was headed to her second job selling clothes at Mama Blessing's store. Meanwhile, Don was in a fancy office, feeling stressed. He had everything money could buy at 28 except what he really wanted. His mother, who meant the world to him, was very sick. Her only wish was to see him married to a good woman. But Don wasn't even dating. Then, his friend Femi, who was good with women, texted him. Femi had an idea to help Don. There was a girl at Mama Blessing's store who was perfect, bubbly, and beautiful. Femi suggested they pretend to be a couple to make Don's mom happy. It seemed like a good plan to Don, so he rushed to the store. There, among the colorful dresses, he saw Ngozi. She was helping a customer, her smile lighting up her face. Don was immediately attracted to her. With Femi's help, they were introduced to each other. Ngozi, meet Don, a friend who needs fashion advice, Femi said with a wink. Ngozi smiled, well, Don, you've got a great face, so any outfit will suit you. Let's see what Mama Blessing has for you. As they talked, Ngozi's laughter and quick jokes made Don feel at ease. He found himself telling her about his mom's wish, his eyes showing how much it meant to him. Ngozi, warm-hearted and dreaming of owning a bakery, surprised him. I could help. Let's pretend to be engaged for two weeks. It'll make your mom happy, and I could use the extra money for my bakery. Don was surprised but felt he could trust Ngozi's sincerity. And so, their pretend engagement began. Don drove Ngozi to meet his mother in his fancy car. Nervous in her borrowed dress, Ngozi felt a flutter of anxiety. But when Don's mother saw them, her face lit up with joy. Don's mother liked Ngozi immediately. You're wonderful, Ngozi. You bring happiness here, she said. Then came a surprise. Don's mother suggested they move in together. Don and Ngozi exchanged worried looks. Living together as pretend fiancés wasn't part of the plan. But they couldn't refuse since Don's mother knew they had been dating for a while. Life in the big, fancy house felt like a dream to Ngozi. She was used to her small apartment, so being there was like being in a movie. Don, who was awkward around her at first, found himself liking her cheerful attitude. They'd spend evenings with Don's mom, Ngozi telling stories about her bakery dreams while Don listened closely. One night, as they were getting Don's mom ready for bed, Don teased Ngozi, asking her what her favorite cake flavor was. Ngozi, surprised, blushed and said it was red velvet. The next morning, Ngozi woke up to a delicious smell. In the kitchen, she found Don covered in flour, trying to bake a red velvet cake for her. They laughed together as they ate the cake, even though it wasn't perfectly shaped. They started to feel something special between them, like the pretend engagement was becoming real. One afternoon, Ngozi was helping Don's mom with a puzzle when Don got a call from his ex-girlfriend, Aisha. Ngozi felt a sharp sting of jealousy, even though she didn't expect it. Don's smile faded as he spoke on the phone, looking annoyed and something else she couldn't figure out. He ended the call shortly with a brisk, I'll handle it. Is everything okay? Ngozi asked, her voice shaking a bit. Don sighed. It's just Aisha. She wants to get back together. Ngozi nodded, trying to smile. Well, good luck with that, she said, but the words felt heavy. The rest of the day felt tense. Don seemed distracted, glancing at his phone now and then. Ngozi tried to focus on the puzzle, but she couldn't concentrate. Was their pretend engagement going to fall apart? Did Don really care about her, or was she just a quick fix for his mom? As the sun set and shadows filled the room, Don cleared his throat. Ngozi, can we talk? 
Ngozi's heart raced. Sure, she said, bracing herself for what he was going to say. Don shifted uncomfortably, avoiding eye contact. Aisha, she's coming over for dinner tomorrow night. Ngozi swallowed hard. Here. For dinner. Yeah, Don replied quietly. Mom wants to meet her. She thinks Aisha is good for me. Ngozi felt a bitter taste in her mouth. Don's mom, who had been kind to her and shared her dreams, wanted to meet Aisha. The woman Don had broken up with for a reason. What should we do? Ngozi asked softly. Don finally looked at her, his eyes troubled. I don't know, he confessed. This situation, it's more complicated than I thought. Suddenly, the room felt heavy with feelings no one dared to say out loud. The fun pretend engagement they had turned into something Rayol was facing a big challenge now. Aisha's upcoming visit felt like a threat to the special bond Ngozi and Don had built. Ngozi knew they needed a plan to deal with this unexpected situation. But when she looked at Don, who looked just as confused as she felt, she realized they didn't know what to do. The future, which had seemed clear and full of dreams, now seemed uncertain. What would happen when Don's ex-girlfriend came for dinner? Would Don's mom see through their act when faced with Aisha's supposed perfection? And most importantly, where did Ngozi's own feelings fit into all of this mess? Ngozi couldn't sleep that night. Every little noise made her heart race. She couldn't stop thinking about Aisha and her perfect image, feeling insecure about how she, a simple baker, could compete. The next morning, the house felt tense. Don, who usually dressed nicely, seemed careless in his clothes. Even his usually cheerful mom seemed quiet. Ngozi tried to distract herself by making breakfast, but the noise of spoons clinking in bowls couldn't hide the uneasy feeling. Ngozi, dear, have you picked out your outfit for tonight? Don's mom asked, sounding worried. Ngozi looked at her simple dress feeling out of place compared to the fancy clothes she'd seen in Aisha's room. I have something, she lied, feeling bad about it. The day dragged on slowly. Ngozi found comfort in thinking about her bakery dreams. Kneading dough helped calm her nerves. When she finished baking cookies, she felt a temporary sense of peace. As the sun set and the sky turned orange and pink, a fancy car arrived. Aisha stepped out, looking stunning in a red dress, with perfectly done nails. Her smile made Ngozi feel even more insecure. Don, always polite, guided Aisha into the house. They all exchanged greetings, but it felt forced. Ngozi looked at Don's mom, hoping for some understanding, but she seemed unsure, her expression switching between Ngozi and Aisha. Dinner was uncomfortable. Aisha talked a lot about her exciting life, leaving Ngozi feeling unnoticed. Don seemed torn, looking worried as he glanced at Ngozi from time to time. It was a small comfort for her. Finally, when Aisha went to the restroom, everyone relaxed a bit. Don's mom, who had been polite before, now seemed suspicious. Don, what's happening here? she asked sharply. You two seem different from what I expected. Ngozi and Don looked at each other, worried. The truth was about to come out. Their pretend relationship was at risk of falling apart, revealing the complicated feelings they had hidden. Don cleared his throat and reached for Ngozi's hand under the table. She squeezed it back, showing her support without saying a word, even though she felt nervous. Mom, Don began, sounding unsure, we have something to tell you. Taking a deep breath, Ngozi felt Don's hand giving her strength. It's not exactly what you think, she said, her voice becoming stronger. Don's mom looked at them both, curious but also a bit disappointed. Explain, she said firmly. So, they did. Ngozi told her how their fake engagement started, with Don needing a fiancé and her needing money. But as they talked, it changed. 
Don explained how Ngozi's laughter brightened his days and how her bakery dreams inspired him. Ngozi spoke about finding comfort in Don's company and how he truly understood her. As they spoke, Don's mom seemed to soften. Their honesty made her skepticism fade. When they finished, the room fell silent except for the clock ticking. Finally, Don's mom spoke gently, what does this mean? Don looked at Ngozi with determination. It means, he said, squeezing her hand, that our fake engagement might have turned into something real. Aisha returned from the restroom, but the atmosphere had changed. She seemed less confident now. Don's mom was polite but distant with her. The rest of the evening passed quickly. Aisha left soon after dessert, no longer the center of attention. When she was gone, Don's mom smiled at them. It seems like my wish for a daughter is coming true, doesn't it, she said playfully. Ngozi felt relieved when Don's mom accepted them. It felt like a heavy burden had been lifted. Confessing had brought them closer, which surprised them both. Later that night, Don walked Ngozi back to her room. They walked in comfortable silence. Thanks, he said when they stopped at her door. For what? Ngozi asked. For being honest, he replied, looking into her eyes. For being yourself. Ngozi smiled, feeling happy. And thank you, she whispered, for showing me there might be more to life than just baking. Don leaned closer, touching her cheek. There might be, he said softly. Before they could get closer, Don's mom's voice interrupted them. Don't forget, movie night is tomorrow. Ngozi and Don laughed together. The future, once uncertain, now seemed brighter. They had shared dreams and maybe even love that started as a pretend engagement. The next day, things felt easier between Ngozi and Don. The tension from before was gone. Don's mom, looking mischievous, enjoyed their honesty. They sat together on the couch, Ngozi holding a bowl of popcorn. Okay, spill it, Don's mom said with a grin. What's this bakery dream Ngozi keeps talking about? Ngozi blushed but started explaining passionately. She talked about her childhood surrounded by baking smells and her dream of creating a place for people to enjoy pastries. Don listened, fascinated. I even have a name, Ngozi said, smiling shyly. Flower and Fancy. Don's mom was excited. Flower and Fancy. It's perfect. We can help you start it, dear. Don is good with business. Don was surprised and coughed on his popcorn, saying, Mom. His mom smiled at Ngozi. Don't be shy, son. You're good with numbers. Maybe Ngozi needs a partner to help with the boring stuff while she bakes. Don liked the idea. He looked at Ngozi with determination. Mom's right. Flower and fancy could be great. And maybe, he whispered, I could be your partner in more ways than one. Ngozi felt her heart flutter. The idea of working with Don excited her but also made her nervous. The next weeks were busy. Don helped Ngozi find a small shop handling legal and financial matters surprisingly well. Ngozi baked delicious treats every day, filling the neighborhood with the smell of fresh bread. Word about flour and fancy spread quickly. Don's mom, who knew many people, turned the bakery's opening into a big event. On the big day, colorful balloons filled the air and people chattered excitedly. Don, dressed smartly, stood proudly next to Ngozi. Flower and Fancy was a success. As the day went on and they sold the last pastry, Ngozi and Don found themselves alone. There was a comfortable silence between them. Thank you, Ngozi said, feeling grateful. For everything. Don smiled warmly. It's not just me. You're the heart and soul of Flower and Fancy. Your passion inspires everyone. He reached out and gently moved a stray hair away from her face. His touch gave her a pleasant shiver. 
And mom, he said softly, she thinks we should give her some grandchildren for setting us up. Ngozi laughed lightly. Maybe that's something for the future, she replied, looking into his eyes. As the sun set and the bakery emptied, Don leaned in and kissed her softly. It felt like a promise for a future filled with dreams, pastries, and love. Months passed by, filled with flower-filled mornings and laughter. Flower and fancy became popular in the neighborhood. Ngozi kept making delicious treats, showing her passion. Don helped with the business side, feeling motivated. One day, as Ngozi was trying out a new cupcake recipe, she suddenly felt sick. Don, concerned, rushed to her. They went to the doctor and got surprising news, Ngozi was pregnant. Tears filled Ngozi's eyes, feeling surprised and incredibly happy. A baby, she whispered, touching her stomach gently. Don hugged her tightly, feeling emotional too. Our baby, he said with a big smile. The unplanned pregnancy, which had once seemed like a distant dream from Don's mom, now felt like the perfect surprise. Their families were thrilled by the news. Don's mom thought it was a sign of their unique love story. Ngozi's parents, who were unsure about their first romance at first, saw how much Don cared for their daughter and were won over. As Ngozi's belly got bigger, the excitement grew. Don, always loving, arranged a maternity photo shoot to capture Ngozi's radiant glow. They decorated the nursery with care, creating a cozy space filled with soft colors and toys, showing their shared dream of becoming parents. At last, the big day came. Ngozi felt a mix of emotions, a fear, excitement, and lots of love as she held their newborn son. He had Don's brown eyes and Ngozi's nose. Looking at their perfect baby, she felt thankful. This little life, born from their unexpected journey, reminded her of the love that grew from a pretend engagement. Years later, Flower and Fancy became a well-known spot in town. The smell of fresh bread kept bringing customers in. But the bakery meant more than just business, it was a symbol of their love story. It started as a small lie but turned into a beautiful family, all because of a chance meeting, a red velvet cake, and a mom who liked to play matchmaker.